Hi, hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys the 3.17 patch notes summary for everything that's changing with Righteous Fire Inquisitor. Before I go ahead and get started with that, if you guys are aware of my live stream, if you come into this channel and you use, I'll have this linked in the description, but if you just use the RF command, it's going to bring up a document that my moderator Chicken made last league. Sorry for the flashbang. I know it's in uh, it's in white and not the one that you guys want. Dark mode fucks my PC. It basically is a massive table of contents explaining everything you need to know about Righteous Fire, especially if you're newer. So definitely go ahead and check this out. It is still valid for 3.17, completely valid. I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you some guys or some things that have changed. So. All right. So I'm not gonna open up the actual patch notes because I pulled everything out of the patch notes and put it right into this POB notes section. So we're gonna talk about it. So some big highlights would be Legacy of Fury, which are boots that drop from Maven, are now a pretty awesome pick for Righteous Fire. You can now get maximum resistance on rare shields. Um, normally you would have to have influence or double influence boots to get this, sorry, uh, on your shield. Plus one, plus one amulets have been moved off of influence. So you can actually literally identify plus one amulets now or plus one, plus one. You can get recoup on rare rings, meaning you don't have to get them from the passive tree. This adds a potential suffix or prefix for our build. They didn't actually say if it's prefix or suffix yet. And then there is new implicit crafting, which I'm not going to go into because this is the actual league mechanic for Arch Nemesis. Um, so if you guys watch the trailer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I would say this is a big buff to Righteous Fire as it's a buff to many builds because Righteous Fire is a build that can utilize so many affixes on their gear, especially since last league they introduced percent increased life regeneration and they buffed all the values of life regeneration, right? Those are very impactful for our build. So um, starting off, what does this mean? This means that um, having a loot filter that highlights shields, amulets, and potentially ring bases are actually going to be very nice. Back in the day, aka last league, it was kind of scuffed because, you know, you would like pick up an amulet and I, you'd idea and it's, wow, hit T1 life and fire damage, but you can never, ever, ever get plus one on it, right? Now you can straight up ID that plus one. Same thing with like your shield or, you know, whatever it else. So actually picking up items and getting usable items is awesome now because you can craft the implicit later into the league. So, you know, this basically brings more power to rare gear, which is very good. So covering rings, um, added four tiers of the new modifier to the core pool for rings that cause a percentage of damage you take to be recouped as life. So you can get up to 15% on recoup. So if you have extra suffixes, or I don't know if it's a prefix, that's nuts. I'm pretty sure it's a suffix. If you have extra suffixes that are not like minimum frenzy or um, resistances, you could potentially get recoup and if you use life catalyst on your ring like say you have a vermilion ring that has percent life that gets scaled off the catalyst you have a life roll that gets scaled off the catalyst you have recoup that gets scales off the catalyst and you could even have life regeneration that gets scaled off the catalyst not saying that's what we're going to have but you know that's an option uh shields we talked about where influence shield prefix modifiers that grant you increases to maximum resistance have been added to the core shield modifier pool Amulets, uh, same thing we just talked about. Legacy of Fury. So Legacy of Fury is these boots right here. They made it so if you look at the minus 14 Ellie res, that has been removed. They now don't minus your res at all. And the Scorch that normally is dropped on the floor. So if I go into like a Blood Aqueduct and walk, the Scorch that is dropped on the floor here is now going to be an aura around you. If you guys are similar to Master of Fire, the, the cluster jewel we use, it's basically going to be like Master of Fire, but it stacks with Master of Fire. And, and it's going to give us the ability to potentially drop Assonance. Assonance is like our end game setup for like explode clearing. This is probably going to be a bit slower, but it's going to still add the ability to have like, not chaining explosions, but like ignites that will help you clear, especially when you're still lacking damage. It's important to note that Scorch by default is minus 10 Ellie res. So even on a boss, that's minus 10 Ellie res. Then the boots themselves can roll up to 50% Scorch effect. Then you can take increased effect of non-damaging ailments 
which actually increases your boss damage. Furthermore, nodes like, say, this on the tree, um, normally we would take this for a chance to um, ignite, but we can switch it for, like, increased effect of non-damaging ailments that will directly apply to your Scorch. So just as a quick example, uh, this might take like a minute to showcase because it's kind of fucked and this is going to look very bad, but I just wanted, I want you guys to get like a little bit of an, uh, an idea of what I'm referring to. So when I walk around these mobs here, it's really inconsistent to apply Scorch because, you know, I literally have to stand on top of their face. But if you look, it says minus 13. That minus 13 is what Scorch is doing, right? So if I smack a mob, it's probably not going to work, but maybe we'll get lucky. There. If you saw that explosion, that explosion is not Herald of Ash. That explosion is actually Legacy of Fury. The reason why it didn't look like any explodes went off except for one is because, again, you literally have to stand on top of the monster to get a Scorch Ground to apply to them. That's being completely reworked to an aura around you, so you will have, like, cascading ignites that scale off of your fire damage, your fire damage over time multiplier, and I would imagine AoE also applies to how big the AoE explosion is. Could be wrong. Alright, moving on. Legacy of Fury, awesome. Um, one big thing to note about Legacy of Fury is Assonance Gloves that we would normally use here in the endgame explode setup do not contribute to bossing at all. Some of the biggest complaints I have with RF is that the boss damage is Garbo. Legacy of Fury attributes to your boss damage by lowering the resistance, one of the biggest ways to increase your damage. And on top of that, um, gloves are a very big source of damage over time because you can get fire damage over time multiplier on them. Now you can get fire damage over time multiplier as an implicit on your gloves. So you could have just normal, really good gloves with like, you know, T1 life, percent increased life regeneration, whatever other stats you have. And then you can use the new currency now to get fire multi on your gloves. This normally would not be possible because we're using assonance. So we get bonus multi and we get the increased damage on our boots because of the minus res. And you don't have to worry about crafting boots. They're already 30% movement speed. Pretty sick. It's important to note you're not getting these right away. They are a drop from Maven, but unless they have changed it, this is the most common drop, I think, from Maven. So I don't expect this to be that expensive. But who knows? All right. Let's keep looking. So, um, just to kind of highlight, uh, new implicit crafting on body, helmet, glove, and boot. What does this mean? This is the new crafting we're getting where uh, we're able to put implicits on our rare gear. You can't do this with influence gear, but essentially it's opening up additional suffixes for us to use. This is very, very good since they introduced the percent increased life regeneration and flat life regeneration which can roll on our body armor, boots, gloves, and helmet. Flat life regeneration on your shield. It'll mainly be looked out for on boots or gloves and possibly chest piece for our build. It should be significantly easier to craft entry-level gear for Righteous Fire now. All right, moving on. Pros. So this is not like pros of my build, but more so like pros of like what the patch did and still things to talk about and note. So it should be easier to gear out of a Rise of the Phoenix because you can actually straight up identify a piece of gear with max res and life on it. So you can potentially swap out of Rise of the Phoenix. It's also important to note that you could identify energy shield base shields, get max fire res and fire damage on an ES base shield, and the ES still contributes to your effective life because we use energy shield. So if you want more damage, look for ES base shields. It should be easier to get a plus one int or plus one fire amulet with life and other stats, Previously, you had to awaken her orb for plus one, plus one. It's still probably very difficult to get a proper plus one, plus one, but it should be very easy to get a plus one with desirable stats. Prior to this, you would go with like a uh, dot multi essence of fire amulet and just kind of go with it. And that's also RNG. New potential boots to use that we explained, which is the Legacy of Fury. Uh, you don't have to spend one or two exalt on Hunter base now. Before, you would look for Hunter Apothecary Base Gloves. Why? Because Apothecary Gloves give you Dot Implicit, and Hunter allows your Dot Implicit Gloves to get Fire Multi. Now, you can pick up any pair of gloves you want, off the floor, identify them, get usable stats, use the new crafting stuff, put Fire Multi on as a prefix. I don't know how expensive that is, but I'm saying like that's an opportunity that presents itself now, so you're not locked into just one pair. It's also important to note that I do believe the new 
implicits are going to override things like apothecary gloves so you don't have to use apothecary gloves which i think is even better should be more realistic to use a rare body armor over a brass dome and shadow stitch now previously you would use brass dome because they buffed it to five max res and you don't take critical strike damage and shadow stitch was insane in scourge league because you would just corrupt everything they're still solid picks if you don't want to craft a rare body armor and you want something cheap you have brass dome or if you want to go more expensive min max shadow stitch is always going to be very good it's just really annoying for a lot of people myself included who constantly corrupt all your gear and balance your resistances but it's still an option the reason why rare body armors are are like a solid choice now is i'm going to go back really fast and just give an example here so here's like uh, a saintly chainmail that's really easy to craft right it just has a 100 life roll with uh, a betrayal craft on it so now and again you could do this before but now you are like uh more rewarded for not crafting on an influence piece and normally influence crafting is where it goes from like 5c to like 10 exalt now you have something in the middle where you can chaos spam essence spam fossil spam whatever get something meaningful and desirable you can use a divination card base to get a guaranteed six link get your desired stats craft what you want and then you can also add implicits to your body armor with the new method of crafting so this is really sick i'm very excited for this and again i emphasize this with righteous fire because your affixes are so important for you right getting that new source of percent life re or life regeneration and uh, flat life regeneration is really really big for the build right it makes it the difference of killing your entire life pool in three seconds to like 2.5 to two seconds like it's so dramatic how big of an improvement it is to the build so uh going back okay um cons so these are general cons of of the build that i want to remind you the build is not like objectively overpowered it does have big downsides your weapon is still a pain in the ass to craft you're pretty much uh fossil spamming or harvest spamming your weapon there's not really a very good way of crafting it. It's kind of RNG. It's very expensive. So F. Uh, helmet crafting is still the exact same. You can go with the six link body armor setup, but I personally prefer the helmet crafting method, uh, which is essence of horror spamming. Still unlucky. You don't get to use your, um, you do not get to use the new implicit with this because you're looking for an elder craft, an elder influence helmet. Because it's elder influence, you cannot use the new currency on influenced items. But this is also where, like, your main damage comes from, right? And who knows? We may have new implicits that may want to push us away from using uh, Elder Craft, like, Elder Gear, specifically. And plus two amulet is probably going to be more difficult since you cannot guarantee with Awakener Orb now with plus one, plus one. Okay, moving on. Um, overall, should have quite a bit more single target damage with the setup since you're trading Assonance Gentle Gloves or Legacy of Fury Boots, uh, which contribute to your single target via Scorch. And then you can get fire multi on gloves. Something else I didn't bring up, a few more things. Number one, you don't have to worry about getting Avatar of Fire for conversion. Number two, you don't have to worry about getting more conversion. Number three, you don't have to get a Fan of Flames. Number four, you don't have to use Herald of Ash. All of that stuff that I just said is to make the Assonance Explosion setup smooth as butter. It's still most likely landslides better than using Legacy of Fury, but it makes you a more of a mapping build than a bossing build, whereas Legacy of Fury literally increases your boss damage while still assists you in mapping, right? Okay, now um, this one is more of like a meme, but people have been asking me 24-7. So people have been asking me about, hey man, with the new jewels that are coming out, the yin and yang jewels, where if you get two of the same, you know, ascendancy notable, which one would you use? So I want to just explain first off that um, those jewels are going to be giga, 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 giga expensive. And number two, RF does not have the best uses for it with my exact build, right? So down here, there's a little section where I put Guardian. You can get like Time of Need and Radiant Faith. But I would not do that because you are giving up two jewel sockets, which would give you with perfect jewels. And I think it's important to compare perfect jewels because... These are chase items, which means they're going to be expensive. 
so they should be compared to expensive options right so in two jewel slots you're giving up 14 percent max life 32 percent fire 16 percent fire multi and 40 percent burn damage one of the biggest problems with rf is damage so you're dropping damage for survivability don't really recommend that right however if you want to there's like time of need and radiant faith and guardian time of need is the giga heal radiant faith is when you reserve your life you get armor um sanctuary of thought makes it so you have increased mana reservation so you can reserve more stuff um god actually what else it gives you what else is it? Oh, i could have just looked here so you get uh 20 of maximum mana is extra maximum energy shield it's like okay but it's not something i would spend a shit ton of currency for if you wanted to go all out in a setup like that what i would tell you to do get ready because this is you know kind of big you can re-roll your entire build into low life righteous fire guardian i don't have a guide for that and will not be making one you can then use the giga jewel to give you pious path from inquisitor and then you can self-craft the chest that gives you consecrated ground when you get hit and then you can automate a Karusking elixir or coruscating elixir to not ever take chaos damage that sounds very nuts to me it also sounds like a pain in the ass to even get started so i don't want to try that but i think that is like a super end game option all right uh and then just some other things to kind of mention because i know you know this is like common that a lot of new players run into this um int requirements after the cluster jewel respec meaning when you drop this section of the tree and you go cluster jewel you're gonna lose a shit ton of int flame mole takes 159 int so that kind of sucks you're gonna have to get int on your gear and or int on the passive tree then dex requirements for swift affliction you're a templar you don't get dex so you need dex on pretty much both of your rings and then single target damage is still a bit low but you can use an offensive shield instead of like a defensive shield to really help with your single target a lot of people have been asking me hey man there's a lot of poe ninja rf builds that are like seven eight nine ten million damage why is yours so low and that's because i first off don't have like perfect jewels uh and on top of that I do not like sacrificing a lot of survivability when I spend most of my time in maps and you don't need crazy damage in maps when you're carried by like an explode setup or just in general mapping damage is not nearly as important as boss damage because the map boss dies way faster than the boss right anyway that pretty much summarizes it um if you guys have any questions you know feel free to drop them in the comments below I of course will be league starting with righteous fire inquisitor and then probably playing Lost Ark when Lost Ark drops, but I'm still going to be playing PoE as well. So we'll definitely have to see there. Anyway, if you guys like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. I normally take Sundays off, but these next two Sundays, I'm actually going to be live because of PoE release slash Lost Ark. So catch you guys all later. Thanks for watching.